Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Gertrude before here bringing you another Minecraft World War II vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Jagdpanzer IV. The Jagdpanzer IV, known by its official ordnance designation as SDKFC-162, was a German tank destroyer based on the Panzer IV chassis and built in three main variants. As one of the casemate style turretless Jagdpanzers, which translates to tank destroyer or hunting tank, designs it was developed against the wishes of Heinz Godorian the Inspector General of the Panzer Trumpen, as a replacement for the Sturmschut III or the Stug III. Gurdian uh, objected against the needless in his eyes. Diversion of resources from Panzer IV tank production as the Sturmschut III was still more than adequate for its role. Officially, only the L-48 armed vehicle was named Yay Panzer IV. The L- Slash 70 armed vehicle was named the Panzer IV slash 70. Um, so yeah, a very interesting tank. Uh, it entered in production in December 1943 and lasted all the way up until basically the end of the war, April 1945. And uh, total built was about 2,000 of these units. So yeah, really uh, interesting tank. I really didn't know too much about the Egg Panzer IV until I uh, went ahead and built it. Didn't really know it was such a prominent tank, um, but apparently it was with about 2,000 units built. It's quite a considerable number. Um, but yeah, really interesting vehicle, and uh, basically just designed to be the same thing as a Stug, just a little bit of an upgraded version um, on the improved Panzer IV chassis. So, really cool vehicle. Um, in this, we do have a camouflage as well on it. This is kind of just a standard green and um, kind of a light tan camouflage, which was. Uh, very rampant on a lot of the German uh, World War II vehicles near the end of the war. I believe it was kind of known as the ambush camouflage, if I remember correctly. Uh, but yeah, really nice camo, and um, we also have the uh, design for trying to kind of show the Zimmerits uh, paint that was used on these tanks. This was in the time period that Zimmerits was used. Um, so basically what that paint did was basically made it harder for mines or explosive projectiles to actually stick to the surface of the tank. So yeah, really cool stuff, and um, I think the build came out really nice. It was uh, one of the requested builds from when I asked you guys all what you guys wanted to see more of before the end of the year, and, you know, World War II builds, and you guys definitely wanted to see a, a Panzer IV. So, happy to finally deliver on that, and I do think the design came out really good for it. Obviously, we have the main gun here, a 75mm gun. Same thing used on the standard Panzer IV. As we work our way back, we have obviously the uh, chassis here, the road wheels, basically the chassis of the Panzer IV, and all that. As we get to the back here, some of the detailing here on the back, all the various little details, intricacies, spare uh, road wheels, uh, some storage compartments, the uh, muffler on the back here, and obviously the vents over the engine bay and all that stuff. And on top here we have obviously the optics and um, all that for the... Uh, basically crew in the case made. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this uh, overview for the Egg Panzer IV. Let's go and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layers, layer 0 and 1. Alright guys, going ahead and moving into our first layer here. We're going to be going ahead and starting with layers 0 1. One quick thing I want to mention for this tank is we're going to be building this in a complete tan, or basically a sandstone color, and we're going to go ahead and go back at the end of the tutorial and add the camouflage onto it. Um, just kind of gives you guys the option, so if you do want to add the camouflage, then you can add it. If those of you guys that don't want to add it or maybe do your own, then you have the ability to do that as well. We will also be building this with the Zimmerit's uh, look on the tank, but we'll talk about that a little bit further once we get into layer 2. Anyways, for layer 0 and 1 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go and place down a narrow brick slab, followed by a narrow brick top slab coming off like so. From this, we're going to go and place down a grindstone like so, followed by a second grindstone like this coming off this one. And then we're going to go ahead and basically repeat the same pattern here a total of three more times. So, grind still like this, one coming off it, so you have a second set here, then a third set, and then a fourth set like that. We're going to go ahead and then place down a narrow brick up sound stair here on the end like so. Once we have that done, we're going to take our smooth sandstone slabs, and we're going to place down a row of three coming off that sandstone top slab here on the side that we're having the front, so the front obviously up here. And then go into the back here, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone top side coming off that grindstone here, the last one like that. We can go ahead and then fill in the space here in between these sandstone top slabs, like so. So fill this in completely to create the base here of the tank. 
And then we're going to go into the site here again, an Arabic slab, an Arabic top slab, and again taking our grindstones, we're going to place down our grindstones here back to back, running all the way along the side here, like so. And our Nerbic upside down stairs. So basically the same exact thing we do on the air side. Now underneath these grindstones, we do want to go and take Nerbic blocks and place down Nerbic blocks here in the ground. And that just shows the track here on the bottom level, like this. And again, same thing over here, like so. After that's all complete, we want to go ahead and go to each one of these grindstones and add a little bit more detail to them. We're going to take an item frame, place an item frame on each one of these grindstones, and we're going to go ahead and place down a smooth sandstone block in those item frames like this all the way along the side there like that. And over here on this side, we're going to go ahead and basically do the same exact thing. And again, our smooth sandstone blocks in each one of those item frames. Now for the front here, we're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves some birchwood trapdoors. We're going to place down a row of three here across the front. And go into the back here, we're going to place down a skeleton scroll on the sides of these two narrow brick up sound stairs. And a birchwood fence gate open up toward the middle sandstone slab like that in the center. After that's all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have here for layers 0 and 1. Here's what it should look like from up above. And that's going to be our basis here for the chassis. So again, make sure that that's correct. everything's correct here. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and connect or continue on to our next layer, layer number two. Alright, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a narrow brick stair on top of these two narrow brick top slabs. Coming off these two narrow brick stairs, we want to go ahead and then place down a birchwood sign coming off the faces here of the stairs, like so. Now, with that complete, um, right here is where you can decide to go ahead and choose to do the Zimmerit's uh, armor or you can go ahead and choose not to do it. So basically for us, we're going to go ahead and use birchwood stairs to go ahead and show that piece on this tank. Or if you want to go ahead and not include it, then anywhere we're placing our birchwood planks or anything like that, you can go ahead and instead use smooth sandstone stairs instead. So kind of up to you guys. Like I said, I'm going to be going ahead and building this with the zimmer paste on the tank. After that, uh, we want to go and then take our birchwood planks. We're going to place down a row of three across here followed by a smooth sandstone block to both ends like that. And then after we have that done, we're going to go off of this smooth sandstone block. We're going to place down a birchwood button, followed by an item frame on each one of these blocks. And we want to go and then place down a cobweb in the item frames like that to both sides. Now after that's done, uh, we're going to go and then take our sandstone walls. We're going to place down a sandstone wall here on both sides, smooth sandstone block in the middle. And we're going to go and repeat this a total of four times uh, after these walls here, a row of three of sand, blue sandstone. So we're going to go and repeat this design here three more times. So like this going all the way back. And this is basically just designed to show our suspension here for uh, the tank. And like it, like we said, four times. So we have four of these walls and four of these rows of three of sandstone blocks. Now once that's done, on the sides here, we're going to take our nether brick slabs. And we're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Nether brick top slabs along the side here. Same thing over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nether brick slabs there along the side. We then want to go and place down a sandstone slab here to both sides like that. A item frame cut off the side of that uh, sandstone slab with a cobweb in the item frame like that for the rear sprocket wheel. When that's done there, we're going to go and place down a item frame on the side of this narrow brick slab here, followed by a smooth sandstone block in it, and a dark liquid sign on the side of the narrow brick slab. We're going to go and do this going all the way toward the front here, skip it a space of one, place in our item frames like so. Each one of these item frames again, the smooth sandstone blocks, and the birchwood signs here along the sides. Um, or sorry, my bad, not birchwood signs, dark liquid signs. So my apologies. Let me go and adjust that real quick. And just like that for our road wheels, or our, basically our guide wheels here on the top. After that, on the back here, we're going to take a chest. We're going to place down a chest here on the left side for a bit of storage. And we're going to then place down a sandstone wall over here on the right side. Come off the sandstone wall toward the back, a bird with sign, and then toward the inside here, an item frame with a smooth sandstone block on the item frame like so. When that's done, we're going to go ahead and finish this layer off by placing down a sandstone stair coming off of each one of these sandstone slabs that are on both sides for the rear fenders. And with that done, that is going to wrap up what we have here for layer 2. Here's what it looks like from above. And with that, we'll go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number 3. Alright guys, moving on to our next layer, we move on to layer number 3. 
clear three to go ahead and get started with here. We're going to place down a virtual trapdoor on top of these two sandstone, uh, two sandstone fill blocks like that. Over here on the left side, or sorry, the right side of the tank here, on top of the stair, we're also going to place down a trapdoor like that. Over here on this side, however, we're going to place down an item frame, and coming off that item frame, we're going to, or in the item frame, we're going to place down a snowball for the headlight, and the closest color we have for carpet to basically tan is unfortunately yellow, so our best bet here is to go ahead and take a yellow carpet and place a yellow carpet on top of the stair here to, again, give the illusion of basically the fender. After that's done, we want to go ahead and grab our birchwood stairs again. We're going to place down a row of one, two, three. And again, this is on the left side here, so three stairs like that going across. We're going to go ahead and then uh, actually turn this third stair to a corner stair, so it's going to look like this. And we want to go ahead and then place down a uh, skip a space here, and then place down another birchwood stair on the side there. In this middle slot here, uh, we can go ahead and place down a smooth sandstone block like that, followed by a birchwood upside down stair. And we're going to then place down a row of one, two, three, and four sandstone top subs coming off that stair like so. On both sides of this first slab and these, the birchwood stair here, we're going to place down two birchwood signs on the left side, as that's the only side we can place them on. We can't place on this side because of the trap doors. Now once that's done, we also want to go and go to the front here in front of the muzzle brake. We're going to go and wrap the signs around the, uh, basically the last slab here in the front. We're going to place an item frame on the front here, and then in that item frame, we're going to place down a black concrete block. And just so we don't have to worry about it later, we're going to place down a virtual trap door on top of that slab like that for the muzzle break. With that done, uh, go ahead and continue on. We're going to take our birchwood planks, and we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, five uh, blocks along the side here, back from these stairs. One, two, three, four, and five. And for the sake of the build also, we can go ahead and just fill in the space in between with some regular sandstone like that. When we get to this portion here, uh, we're going to go ahead and grab our birchwood stairs. We're going to place down a row two of birchwood upside down stairs on both sides here. And we're going to place down birchwood signs coming off the fronts here of the stairs. Just like that. And uh, in the middle space here, uh, we're going to place down two black concrete blocks here on both sides and a row two smooth sandstone blocks there in the middle. We're going to then take a Birchwood trapdoor. We're going to place down a birchwood trapdoor over here on the right side and also on the left side, coming off these two birchwood upside down stairs. Over here on the right side, we're going to place down a birchwood sign, an item frame, and a red stained glass block in the item frame, like that, for the brake light, and that's going to be only on the right side. Middle space here, we're going to place down two acacia wood slabs over, followed by a wither skeleton skull, and then we're going to place down two acacia wood signs on the sides of those two slabs. And that right there is going to wrap up the back there, and with that, that is going to pretty much wrap up what we have for this layer. Just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. Everything looks good. Um, one thing actually is we're going to go to this birchwood stair here. We're going to place that item frame on the side. A black bed in the item frame, rotate on its side, and a birchwood sign on the stair like that to go and create the driver's viewport there um, for the tank. Anyways, that right there is it for layer number three. With that, we're going to move into our final layers here. There's four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We're going to basically build this whole top layer, the top, and pretty much everything else that's left for the tank. So with that, let's go and move into our last final layers, layers four through nine. All right, guys, moving into our last final layers, we have layers four through nine. For these layers here, to go and get started with, we're going to place down a birchwood uh, trapdoor that is going to go and go on top of this sandstone pop slab right here. We're going to go and then place down a birchwood slab back from it, followed by an item frame to both sides. And we want to go and then place down a smooth sandstone stair, or sorry, smooth sandstone full block, followed by a second one back like that. On both sides of this first smooth sandstone block, we're going to place down a skeleton skull again to both sides here, followed by a sandstone wall to the right side. And then we want to place down a birchwood stair here, followed by a stair coming off of it, so this stair turns into a corner stair, then you have a regular stair. And then over here to the side, we're going to place down a sandstone wall. Now coming off the sandstone walls on both sides, we're going to place down an item frame, and in that item frame, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone uh, block like that. To the wall over here on the left side, since there's no, no, uh, nothing basically merging with it in that space, we're going to place down a sign over it like that on the side there. And in this side, obviously, we have the skull here, so we can't do that. Um, so that's done there. Uh, going ahead and continue on. We're going to take our sandstone walls, and on the side here, we're going to go, and go back one, two, three, and four. And same thing over here, one, two, three, and four. We're going to, go to go to the middle space here. We're going to place down a row of three of smooth sandstone blocks. When we get to this section here, we're going to, go and do another row of three. 
And then we're going to then place down a block here in the middle, followed by a stripped birch wood uh, piece to both sides, just like that. We want to go and then take a uh, birchwood trapdoor and place down a birchwood trapdoor here and close it like this. And then we're going to place down two sandstone walls right in this location, just like that. We're going to go and then take birchwood slabs. We're going to place down one and two. One and two going back from the sandstone walls to both sides. On top of the black concrete here, we're going to place down two rails on the left side, one rail on the right side, and then a redstone repeater on top of this black concrete block with the notches flaked far apart like so. We then want to go ahead and grab our grindstone. So we're going to place down a grindstone on top of this acacia wood plank here, or acacia wood slab, and also a grindstone on top of this wither skeleton skull. On the sides of these two grindstones, we're going to place down iron frames, uh, some smooth sandstone blocks in them, and then we're going to place down a birch wood trapdoor directly there in the middle. And after that's done there, that's it for layer four, and with that we're going to move into our final layer. So. For these layers to go ahead and begin with, we're going to place down a birchwood button on top of this um, smooth sandstone block, and we're going to have it turned like so. We're going to go ahead and place down a uh, birchwood trapdoor here, one on this side, and then one here in the middle. We're going to go ahead and place down a flower pot on this sandstone wall, this sandstone block, and this birchwood, uh, strip birchwood piece right here on the back. We then want to go ahead and place down a lever which is going to be facing this direction on top of the smooth sandstone block. Then, uh, very simply, we're going to take a stone button, place it down on top of this birchwood, stripped birchwood piece here, and that right there is going to complete the top there. And the last thing we need to do here is to go ahead and grab a birchwood fence post. We're going to place it here on this sandstone wall, and we're going to go up from it one, two, and three, and four iron bars like this for the radio antenna. And with that all complete there, that is going to complete my uh, basic design here for the Panzer IV. This is what it looks like in the standard camouflage. As you can see, the birchwood planks here really do a good job at showing that uh, Zimmerit's paste that would be on these tanks, especially um, in, I would say, kind of mid-late stages of the war. Uh, I definitely recommend adding it, but again, you don't have to have it if you really don't want to. Especially if you're going for a late war scenario, they weren't really doing the Zimmerit's paste anymore as it was proven it wasn't that uh, amazing for how effective and also of basically the resource, lack of resources Germany had. Um, we're going to go now move into the section of adding the camouflage. It's pretty straightforward and just basically involves mixing some blocks in. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that real quick and talk about that. Uh, but other than that, um, that's it for the design. Let's go ahead and move into uh, basically the camouflage. So before we move into the camouflage, I just realized real quick that uh, I did forget to basically do the sides here, the road wheels. Um, so if you uh, for some reason did not do them, uh, because I did not do them on both sides, make sure you go ahead and add them. Uh, I don't know why I missed those, but I did. It's been a few it's been a few weeks since I recorded the tutorial, so uh, those kind of things happen. But basically you want your road wheels here on both sides, obviously, and that's your design there. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into the camouflage real quick. Alright guys, going ahead and moving into our camouflage. Now our camouflage is really straightforward. Um, it really just involves you taking some blocks and mixing them into the build. I'm not going to copy this thing exactly. Uh, I'm just going to kind of do my own thing and talk about it a little bit. But basically, anywhere we have our sandstone slabs or stairs, we'll be using dark oak wood as a replacement. Remember, if you delete a slab or anything like that, make sure to replace the signs or buttons or anything that might come off of them. Um, and also, on top here, we want to make sure that we replace our trap doors or anything like that. And also, if you have the top slab here, you can put green carpet on top of it to kind of add a little bit more green color to it. Um, when it comes to the Zimmerit paste, if you did go ahead and add that feature, uh, one thing I would recommend doing is using dark oak wood for those sections and not using green uh, terracotta where you wouldn't have it or where you would place a flow block, just really because the dark oak wood has the same texture, so therefore it kind of still shows that illusion of the Zimmerit paste we're trying to go for. So I definitely recommend taking that into account, especially on your sides here and all that. Um, so as you can see, I'm very simply just kind of randomizing in a little bit of green here, um, here and there where I feel a fit. Um, it's nothing too fancy. It's really just kind of mixing stuff in using your green colored blocks and dark oak wood to kind of make it work. And we also want to use some mossy columns to walls up on top here. We can replace a little bit of the blocks on top here. And since the blocks here on the top, we're not using the Zimmerit paste. We can go ahead and use some solid green blocks. So. Um, that's kind of really the only places that and the 
kind of engine, the top of the engine here. Uh, that's basically the only places you're really going to be able to use the um, kind of uh, green terracotta. The most of it's going to be the upside down stairs. And again, remember, if you do leave a lot to replace the um, signs or anything like that that may have been taken off of it. And, you know, make sure you look all the way around your tank, make sure you get all your little nooks and crannies here, and really kind of make that camouflage, you know, apparent on basically throughout the vehicle. And over here we'll add a little bit in here, um, so on the side, nothing too crazy. And we went about, we want probably maybe about a 66% of the tan and basically the rest, so 33% basically green is kind of what, the, what we're going for here. Um, and something like this isn't too bad, I kind of will go with that. Um, also, don't forget to kind of randomize in this section here, that's, you know, kind of in your track area. Um, very easy section to miss, really, if you're not paying too close attention. And you can also go ahead and change out the blocks or the colors here of the wheels by putting some green terracotta in those item frames instead to kind of change the color of the wheels. Um, so kind of a fun little technique here to you know, show that camouflage is, you know, going all the way to the wheels and all that stuff, as it would do. And we're just going to kind of take this around here, and we'll get a pretty decent looking little camouflage here for the tank. And again, it's nothing perfect, obviously you can refine them if you're building a lot of these in one scenario. I definitely recommend doing a different camouflage pattern for each one, so kind of maybe just building each one of your pet camouflage from scratch just kind of adds a better overall look to the vehicle, at least I think. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it, and that's really it for the Yang Panzer IV. Hope well, you guys do enjoy this tutorial for it. This was a uh, re highly requested vehicle for you guys to see by the end of the year, so happy to deliver on that, and again, hope you guys all do enjoy it. If you do want to use this design, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This can be thing from a sign of the build to a link to my channel or this video if this does appear on any social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, you're free to defer projects you guys are working on overall. Enjoy the build, have fun fit, and all that fun stuff. Uh, but other than that, that's going to do it for this tutorial. Thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204, and I'll see you guys next time.